I look a hot mess. That's okay. It's shower day. I'll look marginally better afterwards. I'm behind filming for my makeup chopping block, so today I'm going to be whacking out two of them. Uh, the first one I'm doing, which is the one you're watching right now, is stuff that I know that I'm getting rid of. For real. For, for fucking real. I know that I've said that in the past and I've actually ended up keeping some things. But these are all things that uh, I know that I no longer want and I'm just going to play around with them because I want to get some use out of them. Otherwise, I feel like I'm a bad person for spending money and then not using the stuff. So, we've got three concealers, none of which match me. They are all a little bit dry, even though these are supposed to be like hydrating concealers. They, they still feel a little bit dry on me. I have a very sheer, shimmery, Shrek colored liquid eyeliner that just doesn't really function as an eyeliner. And then I have a sparkly black lipstick that is very similar to the sparkly navy one that we had earlier in the series. And it's just too much of a mess to deal with. What I am going to do today is I am going to be working with a lot of texture. Um, I'm not going to be doing like a, a serious makeup look. I'm just going to be fucking around essentially. So I'm going to be using these on my forehead to make kind of like a, a nubbly pattern, very painterly. And then um, just a very subtle pop of green, like right around here, and then the black lip. And then I'll go wash it all off in the shower. Yay! So let's start. Well, that did not go as according to plan. Still not according to plan. I think the, the hair in there kind of messed up my, my blop. Still not going according to plan, but we'll see. This is why I'm playing around with stuff right now. Just to see how things lay, how to do stuff, why not? Makeup is always a learning experience, especially when you take a break from it for several years, like me. So the holiday season is finally over, which means no more Christmas music in stores, which I'm so excited about. My personal opinion, this is not coming from someone who celebrates Christmas or is a Christian. Um, let's keep the, the holiday bops and tunes to like maybe a week before Christmas. We don't need an entire like month and a half because you know some radio stations are starting in freaking November before um, Thanksgiving actually comes around. So hooray! There shall be much peace on earth and goodwill for me to other people since I'm no longer wanting to rage people over horrific, horrific Christmas music. I did have a good holiday season though, even though my celebrations were earlier in the month. Um, the majority of my family practices secular Christmas. They're also not Christians. They just, you know, like going along with the holiday cheer. It's more of a family event for us than a religious one. Um, and so, you know, I gotta enjoy those spoils. I've already talked about how awesome my, my new electric tea kettle, my um, toaster oven, and my new charging cord for my vacuum have been. But um, some of my family were really generous this year and help me out financially, which I'm really blessed that they can do that right now. And that is very much appreciated. I have to send them little thank you notes that I'm gonna hand make myself because I have a shit ton of watercolor that I haven't played around with in like, ah, uh, three months? You know, it's fine. Only spent a couple hundred dollars on that stuff. But I'm just really fortunate that my family is in a state to be able to do that because like without their help, this month would have been really, really bad. And they're totally right. Divorced Christmases are freaking great for kids. So I made off like a bandit. And because I got some little bit of financial assistance and the stuff that comes from my aunt is never for appropriate things. So it's, it's legal tender, but you can't spend it on actual like proper things. Like you can't use it to spend on bills or um, on your rent or anything, you know, adultish like that. It's just supposed to be there for pure fun. And uh, since I got a decent chunk of change from her, I bit the bullet and I went and I ordered some pigments from an online pigment retailer. And I'm really excited about that because, well, I'm just really reaching into the same shades over and over again here. But I'm really excited about that because now I get to mix my own eyeshadows because I do have plenty. I have plenty. Um, but some of them just aren't exactly what I need, you know? And since, you know, I've done watercolor in the past, I've done paint mixing and stuff like that, I feel like it shouldn't be 
insanely difficult for me to get the hand of pigment mix mixing. Um, I also bought some little pans and stuff to press on them, to press them in. And I don't know, I'm just really excited about it because I've got a small, small group of friends that are willing to be test test bunnies because uh, of course I'm not going to be testing anything on animals and I don't want to buy anything that's been tested on animals or that have come from animals with the exception of ethically sourced lanolin and or boost wax because I feel like those don't actually harm the animal as much um, and my mom owns well not owns an apiary she has two beehives that she uses as a hobby and um, she sometimes gives me uh, I keep hitting that one with the same color but um, she sometimes gives me her leftover wax and stuff and I feel like I'll use that because I've seen how she treats her her bees they're her they're her babies <laughs> babies if you would and um yeah I totally trust her and the humane way that she treats her bees the first little group of things that I want to create is kind of like a vocaloid <laughs> inspired uh, color scheme because I've been playing a lot of Hatsune Miku lately and um, it's just nice being able to concentrate on one thing that's very much requires my attention but is still really engaging because as someone with ADHD it's very hard for me to pay attention but I can pay attention for the Vocaloids so I want to do a nice like let's see a nice teal for Miku, obviously, a nice like strawberry milk pink for Luca. Um, obviously, a nice bright blue for K not Keiko, Kato. Kato is my favorite. And then a nice red for um, Mako and a bright yellow for the twins, plus like a shimmery overlay shade that has like kind of a gold shift for you know the other half of the twins. This is not. <laughs> turning out like how I wanted but you know it's fine we'll keep going here to play make discoveries and even though they're shitty discoveries like this you know it's, it's, it's all part of it you can't learn if you don't try I'm really excited about that the pigments since they ship from here in the United States should only take uh, maybe a week or two to get here because I placed the order I think it was Christmas day, like Christmas morning. Shipping's probably gonna take until Monday at the earliest or Wednesday at the latest. And I don't know how long it's gonna take in transit because our poor postal service is really, really overwhelmed right now. You know, with all of the holiday um, mail in addition to the gutting that the current administration has done to it, which is fucking gross. It's honestly like, you know, when you have people in positions of governmental power or just like, you know, local or state power, like the police or like judges or uh, presidents or mayors or stuff like that, you always hear people have gripes with them be like, yeah, yeah, fuck this mayor or like fuck that police officer in particular or just fuck the entire police force. Um, but I've never heard someone say, fuck that mailman. Like they are by far one of my favorite public servants. Yeah, they're, they're pretty rad. And I very much want them to stay in business because it is so much cheaper to go through our, you know, nationalized postal service, which we've been using for quite some time. It's easier to go through them than pay out the ass for FedEx or UPS because they just go crazy with the fees, especially if you have to be delivered to way, 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 way out in um, like rural areas, it just really gets expensive. I'm all for the postal service and I can't wait for them to deliver onto me my package of creativity. I got several like shift shades too and like, um, like gleams and stuff, little mixins and stuff for the pigments, which most of which are matte. Um, so that'll be fun. Experimenting with shifty shades and shears and all that other stuff. I can literally do whatever I want. I love that. Should I keep going all the way down my face for this? I think there's probably enough. Also probably recycle these tubes as something that I could use for potential future sample packaging so I can give stuff to my friends like 
in a professional nice little tube instead of in like some sketchy little tiny drug bag, which is what a lot of my, my pigment samples are coming in. So I want to at least keep them a little bit nicer looking. I don't think I've ever worn this much concealer in my life. Well, I hope I haven't, Jesus. I remember this one time, the one time that I wore foundation for like the first time was to my school district's like theater awards because we have a very robust theater department, which I think is fantastic. But I got some of my mom's uh, Wet n Wild foundation that they don't even make anymore. Um, and it was too dark for either of us. And of course it oxidized just heavily. So I put on a whole lot because I didn't know what I was doing. And I was like, yeah, you have to have full coverage. And what I thought was full coverage was you just had to have everything covered with foundation. And Lord almighty, I am glad there are no pictures of that event because I looked a fucking mess. And I probably had around this much stuff on my face at this time, but of course, sheared out and whatever. Um, I'm just happy that I have grown as a person since then. And I have learned how to... Uh, properly do things or at least do them a little bit better than I used to really. I'm just so excited about all these pigments because like I'm definitely a color person. Um, I see colors and I become obsessed with like certain color schemes or something like that so I feel like this is going to be a really good way for me to express myself and also prevent me from buying more makeup in the future because Hey, why would I go buy a $50 palette with only, with like, you know, 12 shades, only two of which I want, when I could just formulate similar shades at home? Like, you know, it's not rocket science. It's just color theory and cosmetic chemistry. And I've been doing a lot of reading up on uh, ingredients and uh, preservatives and stuff like that just to make things shelf stable and figuring out what things actually do because I know right now there's this big obsession with clean beauty and like no chemicals and honestly if you had a beauty product with no chemicals in it you would have you wouldn't even have fucking air because that's a fucking chemical too literally everything in the galaxy is made up of chemicals you cannot get away from them <laughs> it's just how things go however I do concede that there are some um you know, ingredients that do cause a lot of harm, um, most of which have been banned by the FDA and stuff like that for use in cosmetics like lead and asbestos and stuff like that. But it still sneaks in because you have huge companies like Johnson & Johnson using a whole bunch of talc, which has been kind of filled out with asbestos. So I don't want to be that asshole. I also want to figure out what's going to be the best options for doing sh shelf stability and right now, I'm not super worried about it because it's just going to be pigments, but later on, maybe I'll want to do like lip glosses and stuff like that. Because I think that's a, I think that's a really fun project. I honestly kind of look like a race from Star Trek. Just kind of getting there, a little goopy, a little weird. This is taking forever. <laughs> I made a bad decision with what to do with my time. Oh my god, we're almost getting there. The upper half of my face is gone. It's done. Ugh. Holy balls. I'm never doing this again. We're starting to get a little bit thin on this one. Starting to see the uh, inner workings of that. So that's cool. Does this count as panning products? Probably not. I feel like this is cheating. Now that these are kind of thinning out because I'm losing product. That solves my problem of figuring out how to how to fade these things because I was worried that I would not be able to, but they're getting less blop every time I do it, so it'll just kind of peter itself out. Yeah, this thing is helping me see every single little teeny tiny baby hair on my face. Look at these around the brows. You can see a little bit on the, the cheekies there. My mustache is just caked and gorgeous. <laughs> uh, you know, just, just regular stuff kind of blend into nothing into my neck which is a drastically different color but let's let's pretend it just blends into nothing here okay, i'm gonna hit a little bit of this on my lips i don't think i'm gonna be able to put any of that eyeliner on my face because i went a little ham around the eyes so we'll just uh put that one in a different declutter i suppose wow this is supposed to be black right and it's coming up blue 
and it's more gray because of all the, the color. It's not its natural hue at all. That's supposed to look like right there. It looks like graphite, which I rather do like, but I made the dumb decision of putting on concealer beforehand, so we're just gonna run with it. I'm a melting little monster. Hooray. This isn't supposed to look good, but it was fun to put on, and I feel like I'm made of goo. And with that, I'm going to get rid of all three of these. I am going to be getting rid of the lipstick as well. And we're gonna be saving that eyeliner for another day. Time to go hop in the shower and rinse all this shit off. Bye-bye.